everyone, welcome to Unicorn Desk Designs. My name is Sammy and on this channel we do DIYs with science and there's always tons of laughter to be had. Today I have Christmas spindle DIYs for you. So let's jump right into this video. So we're gonna start this video by heading outside. Um, I just wanted to kind of give my little tip that like whenever I'm doing wood projects, I like to do multiples at one time. So I will go through and kind of like write down on a post-it what exactly I'm making. And then I will go get my pieces of wood, lay them out. And then that way I can keep everything together, keep my measurements on track and I feel like it just helps me stay organized during the process. So um, I think a lot of you guys asked about this sander and I will try linking it in the description box. We got it online at a hardware store so I don't think you could get it on Amazon. So <laughs> I had my husband cut the spindles because I did not trust myself with something round because I thought it was going to shoot up and hit me in the face. Okay, so we are gonna start with this humongous spindle post. Like I said, we picked up a huge banister and I had four of these and I definitely wanted to put one of them to use. So I am going through with my skill orbital sander and I'm not necessarily trying to take the like shininess off or the clear coat or anything like that. I'm really just using this to smooth out um, any imperfections, the glue that was used on these, just to create a nice clean surface. Then I clean it off with crud cutter and a cloth. And then I will go back with a wet rag just to get the crud cutter off as well. I know that's a lot, right? All right, so now we are going to use some painter's tape. I'm gonna paint the top of this off. Now I wanna know, if you don't necessarily have one of these, you could always use a four by four. You would just have to find something round to put at the top of your post. So after I'm done taping that, I'm gonna grab, I think this is Candy Apple by rust and I am going to rattle can it. I know that sounds so bad, but this is just as good of a quality as chalk paint is, and it makes this process a lot easier. So that's why I chose to go with this, and I do have this paint tent in my Amazon store link. Now I'm gonna take painter's tape once again. Now this had a lot of obviously curved edges. So I just tried my very best to one, pull the tape tight, and then two, as I was going on those curves, sorry, my arm is pretty much blocking it, but I tried to press in, you could see right here, oh yeah, yeah, mama, hold on. Dog can't see or hear, but she could definitely bark super loud. Okay, so like I was saying, I was trying my best to like really push my fingers into those curves so that I didn't have a ton of paint going underneath my tape. Um, and then I'm taking just a primer white spray paint again, and I am going to do this. I only needed one coat of this primer white, and again, it's by rust -Oleum. Then you guys, while that is drying, we're going to make the base. So I cut two pieces of wood, one smaller, one larger, and I will go ahead and leave the measurements in the description box for you. I applied some wood glue to these, set them on top. You wanna wait until that wood glue gets a little tacky before you try to shoot your nails through it or your piece of wood is just gonna move around. Now, if you had a hot glue gun outside, then by all means, use that with it. That way it stays in place. Then I wanted to spray my base in this um, red color. Now you guys, I had to show this because it was pretty funny. So I knew I was totally capable of putting the base on the post, but you know, my husband, he's a little stronger. We had to push screws through. So I was like, you know, babe, can you do this for me? Well, my husband likes to overanalyze everything and he wants to be super precise and exact. So he... <laughs> He spent so much time trying to figure this out. And literally what I would do, y'all, is I would have set that post on top of my base. I would have eyeballed the middle. Then I would have traced around my post. So then I would get the square, the size of my post. 
And then what he's doing right here is he's pre-drilling holes into the base. So what's happening right here is like where you would trace around the post, you're going to put four holes inside of that square. I feel like I'm not making sense. I apologize. And then because he's, this is why he doesn't have a YouTube channel. Um, then we get some long screws that's Montgomery and we just screw that to the bottom. You guys easy peasy <laughs> kind of. And then I took the tape off and I do clear it as well with some, um, spar urethane in case I do decide that I want to take it outside. Now I'm taking that skill, um, orbital sander once again, and I'm hitting all of those edges. I wanted a distressed look, but you do you, if that's not your look now for the top, I didn't want straight gold. That isn't really like my vibe. And I plan on keeping this and regardless if it was straight gold or not, the kids still loved it. So I'm taking the gilded wax, that gold DIY wax, and I'm putting it on top of this just to give it like a nice gold sheen without going like too much on here. But that is preference once again. So after I cleared this, well, no, did I clear it? I think I did clear it. Anyways, we are going to make the sign for it. So I'm going to take this piece of wood antique green and then i am going to do a pretty good coat of this on the front the back and the sides i then go to my cricut and i found this image in cricut design space so it is not my image i just searched north pole that was it and for whatever reason i decided to use this arteza um transfer film and yeah, haven't worked with very sticky paper in a long time. And, uh, I ended up having issues. All right. Now I'm taking my stencil brush from Dollar Tree. I'm taking white chalk paint, and then I'm going to stipple this on to my transfer, not my transfer, my stencil. And I end up doing two coats of this. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Anywho, I do two coats of this. Again, this is Aura Mask 813 stencil vinyl and it is in my Amazon store link. Now we're gonna pull that back and we're left with this beautiful image. I love this green. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put it on our pole or spindle or whatever. And I'm just going to measure on each side so that I know that it is centered on here. I'm gonna apply some wood glue underneath this and then again, once that wood glue gets just a little bit tacky and I know that it's not going to move when I shoot my nails through it, then I shoot a nail through the top and the bottom. And you guys, I love the way this turned out. I did end up adding like a gold burlap bow to the top that I didn't film, but this was a lot of fun. And like I said, if you don't necessarily have this big spindle, then you can get a four by four, which can be pretty inexpensive and Home Depot will cut it down for you. So, um, I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope it gave you some inspiration. If you do happen to find these on Facebook marketplace, or maybe you have some in your stash, I don't know. So I hope you love this. I know my kids already love it. So I'm excited to put it out for Christmas this year. Now I know we've all seen these, but I have not done spindle ornaments before. So I cut a bunch of these spindles down. I am taking, oh my gosh, I forgot what color this is. You guys by DIY, I'll link it down below, but it is a DIY paint. And like DIY paints, as they dry, they get lighter in color. So you can see how beautiful that dries down. Isn't that gorgeous? And then I'm going to take the wax, this gold. You guys, I went nuts with this. I'm just taking my finger and I'm going to rub it around the, um, the raised. Oh my gosh. Sorry. I'm like looking at this and I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. And then I'm putting it on places that I thought that maybe the spindle would naturally distress. And you guys, I did not plan on using this on multiple spindles, but I ended up doing that because this gold is so like, I don't know how to describe it. Like antique gold. Like it's not like a bright, ugly yellow gold or like brassy gold. It's so beautiful. And then like, because it's a wax, it almost gives like this dark hue around it. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Is that gold not stunning? 
or what? Oh my gosh. Then I take the clear wax by DIY and I am just going to do a rough brushing over that. Now the DIY wax will make your piece a little darker. It does dry down some in a meaning of like it, it gets a little bit lighter again, but it will not look exactly like it did before the wax. Hope that makes sense. All right, now this one I distressed prior and it definitely was not cute. So we are gonna cover this with the same green paint and then we're gonna do a different technique. So we're gonna grab our candle and we're gonna rub our candle over this paint. Now remember, the more wax you get, the more distressed look you're going to get. Um, the less the less distress you're going to get. So make sure you rub that all over the place then we're going to take crimson by waverly and i am going to put that on now if you had multiple layers you could do like white then you would wax it then you would do green wax it red or sorry green wax it and then put your red on and then when you do this part which this is just like shipping tape and you pull it back if you did more colors you would see multiple colors in that um, but since I only put the wax on top of the green, that is why we are seeing the green. So I thought this was super pretty. Um, and then I ended up getting mica powder. And I got these. These are from Arteza. And I got this strawberry red. So what I'm doing here is I'm clearing the spindle with the clear DIY wax first. Then I'm going to dip my finger into this strawberry red mica powder. I, I was on now like a shiny look. I don't know, frosted look, we'll say. And so I started again, just rubbing those on all of the details. And then I kind of went over the parts where the green was showing and put that little shimmer of red on there as well. Now, you guys, I'm just taking you through the different paintings that we did on these spindles. So hang tight. All right. So this one, we're going to do crimson. And I ended up having to do two coats of this because of the black paint. After this, I am going to get that gold wax once again. And you guys, this gold wax did not disappoint on any color. Like on the red, it popped. It looks so Christmassy and gorgeous. I've also used it. You'll see later on gray. I'm upset. Um, and again, the DIY products I get from upcycled by Brie.com. And I always have her link in the description box. I also clear that one as well. You guys, I just didn't show it. Didn't want to be super repetitive. And then on this beautiful spindle, I left it natural. We're not painting it. I just rubbed the gold wax on it to give it a Christmassy look. Gorga. Okay. And I cleared that one. Then you guys, I kind of ruined it. I should have done all of these like green, red colors and gold, but for some reason I saw icicle with this one. I don't know why. Um, so I painted it Nantucket blue. Then I took my white wax and I am taking my stencil brush. Now, when I do waxes, you guys, I like to keep the same brush. I use the same brush all the time and I just keep it in a sandwich bag um, to keep it nice and soft. And I just reuse the same brush over and over. Now I'm taking a blue mica powder and I'm rubbing that. Oh gosh, I got such a great angle on, on in this frame here. And um, then I'm going to take these eye hooks and I'm going to drill a hole at the top of my spindles. Now, if you don't have a drill, the eye hooks, you can just push and screw in. However, it gets a little tough. So you do have to grab some pliers and then you'll keep twisting. These eye hooks do come in gold too, which that is what I really wanted, but I could not find at Walmart. This entire pack of the eye hooks cost me 97 cents at Walmart. Then I'm going to take the twine. You guys can also use ribbon. I mean, there's so many options you could use for hanging these, but I just did like a very basic twine and you guys check out how this came out. Oh my gosh. Look at that gold. gold. I love, love 
love these. Let me know if you've made these before or if now you're like super inspired and you're going to go scour your garage and Facebook marketplace for spindles. Um, these are going to be available. These four are available for purchase on my website. So go check that out. Oh my gosh. Look at that. That original spindle is to die for. Like I just can't. And then I thought I would show you the blue and white one, even though, you know, they're not as good as the red and green ones, but Here's the blue one. Doesn't this remind you of an icicle? It's just longer. I don't know. And then here's another one I did. Come on camera, focus. And you can't see, I have like a frosty white shimmer on there, but it definitely wasn't my favorite. All right, you guys, I hope you are just as excited as I am about spindle DIYs. We found a whole banister on Facebook Marketplace for I think like $25. My husband took his truck and picked them all up. So I've been sitting on those for quite some time. So I was like, you know what? Spindles are going to be such a great way to bring some Christmas into the home. The baby is up. So you guys, if you're digging me, if you're digging the channel, if you're digging the DIYs, then make sure to like, subscribe, and make sure to leave your girl a comment. It's an absolutely free way you can help your girl out. And with that said, you guys, let's get back into the rest of this video. So you guys, um, these won't be on my website because I'm totally keeping them. Now, you guys might look at this and be like, those aren't spindles. When I thought of this video, I immediately thought of these. I considered these spindles, maybe because they're legs to something. I don't know. I didn't look up the definition to spindles. Anyways, I am using Prairie Gray by DIY Paints and you guys have seen me use this I think once before and it is such a gorgeous color as it dries down. Now remember DIY Paint is clay base, it's matte, it's water soluble, so it does dry down to be a lighter color. So I'm going to cover these. At first I thought I was gonna keep them their original color, but I had to like sand the sides down and stuff. So I was like, you know what? We're going for prairie gray. So after I'm done doing that, <laughs> look at the wax. I'm grabbing that wax again. And I am going to put it on all you guys. Check this out. I, I know I probably sound silly with how excited I am about this, but you know, it's the little things in life y'all. And th this is it. So uh, again, I'm just applying with my finger and I am trying to hit all of the details first, a little heavier um, than I will like the, the smoother spots. And the same thing, like I'll go around like those rounded edges, like anything to make those details pop out at you. Excuse me, that is where um, we are going to put this. Then as you'll see, as I get up top, like how I'm heavier around the detail, and then I kind of just get the excess that is on my finger, and I like kind of just rub it over those smoother parts to just get a little bit of that shiny, shimmery look on the candle. And this gray, I was worried that the gold and the gray wouldn't look that great, but I think it looks so good. And then like we did with the spindles, I am taking the DIY clear wax. You don't want to dip your brush in DIY products. Something about they have like a natural property in them and they could build bacteria. I don't know, don't quote me. Go watch Upcycled by Brie for more information on these. Um, I, just, I like to know, like think I know what I'm talking about you guys. And then you y'all check me in comments. So um, I read them, I know. Um, so I'm going to clear this entire thing. And like I said, like it, the wax does make the co color darker again. And then it, when it does dry down, it dries down a little lighter, but not, not so much. You are going to have a darker paint color. Now, after I'm done with this, I got these, um, trees from Hobby Lobby. I didn't mean to buy stuff for this video, but the Dollar Tree trees were too small. And then these, oh my gosh. Anyways, so I drilled a hole on the top of this and then I put some of my Star Bond super glue in there and then I just stuck the little metal post down into that um, spindle. And then I do the same thing for the other one. And y'all, I have a third one of these and I bought a white Christmas tree. So um, yeah, I need to complete this trio here. So you can see, I'm just drilling a hole down. You can see the, the metal piping, or I don't know what this is called, um, right there. And it just goes in there 
so perfectly and then we want to secure it down so it doesn't come out of there with our star bond super glue and look at how beautiful these turned out oh my gosh oh my word these make my heart so very happy i love that they're you know a different color it's not just like your standard green or red for christmas yet it definitely screams christmas vibes which i love imagine this on a tablescape with some other things Gorga. all right you guys so our next one we are going to take one of these spindles as you can see we cut it at a very sharp angle because i want this to be something that you can stick like in your entryway as you're walking up to your porch or a um you know a flower pot something like that i painted it white two coats didn't think you guys needed to watch that then i'm going to take this jumbo craft stick this is from walmart sorry if there's an echo i'm recording in my kitchen and I'm gonna cut this down to size here. Now, I would have preferred, <laughs> and you guys get to hear Hank, hey, gosh, real life, you guys. I would have preferred to use a paint stir stick just because it's thicker and it looks better. However, I could not find my paint stir sticks for the life of me, so I had to settle with this jumbo craft stick. I'm going to paint that with Rich Black by Folk Art, y'all. There hardly is nothing left in this darn um, bottle, but I am trying to get the every little last bit. Okay, so then I realized as I put this on, I'm like, hello, you gotta paint the top of the hat. So I'm just gonna go around the top of my spindle, spindle and trace out some lines so I know where to stop with my black paint. Then I'm going to take my folk art paintbrush and that um, rich black, and we are gonna paint the top. And make sure you paint like the actual top top of the spindle uh, because that will be showing obviously now if this is going outside make sure you guys are clearing it with a spar urethane or a like weather guard spray then i glue that craft stick on there for his hat now i'm going to take the um the opposite side of a paintbrush and that's what i'm going to use to create his eyes and then you all called me out on not having mouths on my snowman on the other video so i made sure to give him a mouth this time then we are going to paint that triangular side tri oh no first we're taking this sponge brush and i'm using the bottom of it to create buttons i do have daubers but i was just using whatever was near me and this actually ended up working out very well i just put a little paint on it and then took the excess off so i didn't have a big old blob there and it worked great now we are going to do the nose so i just take a very small paintbrush and we are just doing a sideways triangle right here look at how easy that was you guys and then I am going to just tear off a piece of this Dollar Tree fabric and create a scarf. And I love the way he turned out. This was a super simple DIY. And imagine like a bunch of these lining like the entryway like to your porch or your sidewalk. So adorable. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want more spindle DIYs that are more like regular home decor let me know in the comments because i got a lot and i got a lot of ideas to show you so let me know i hope you guys are enjoying all of the christmas vibes here on youtube and please make sure to leave me a comment i appreciate you all spending your time with me watching these videos and chatting and i will see you soon I tried covering it with box dye and needed my husband's assistant and I still missed like a big gray spot right there. <laughs> okay. But and it's supposed to be like deep burgundy. You guys see any of that? Besides my like oh oh kind of in the sunshine here. Hey. Eh? All right, y'all. I hope you guys are just as excited. I say y'all and then I say you guys. That makes no freaking sense. <laughs>